Hi, my name is Megan, and this is episode one of A Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. I decided to do this podcast. Um, I have a couple of friends who now um, I know in real life who have podcasts, and um, I've been really enjoying all of the knitting content on YouTube. Um, but I felt like there was a little bit of a hole. There's not a lot of plus size makers out there sharing what they're making, um, sharing modifications, patterns that they love. Um, so that's the hole I'm going to fill. And also, um, this is a little bit just for me because I knit a lot. I want to remember what I'm knitting, what I'm enjoying, um, what patterns, you know, are sparking inspiration or yarns that are sparking inspiration. So just stuff for me to go back to um, in the future. But I will follow mostly the same knitting format a lot of people are using, which is going to cover what I'm wearing, what I'm making, maybe some future plans, um, new yarn acquisitions. Um, because I do have a lot of yarn behind me, I will also probably be talking about some dyers maybe you don't know, um, and some commercial yarns that I think maybe don't get enough love, um, or just, you know, why I picked certain things. And other knitting opinions. I will be saving some of those for the end of every video and what I'm reading because I read a lot. I knit a lot and I read a lot and I feel like a lot of you do that too. So um, this is really probably only going to be watched by my knitting group. So hi Pacific Knit West and I hope you guys enjoy uh, what I'm going to share today. So to get started, um, I do have notes here. This is my first episode and also there's a lot of stuff to cover. So if I'm looking down, I'm just looking at my notes, but let me start with a little bit about me. So if uh, you're not in my knitting group <laughs> and you're just watching this podcast, which welcome, thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Megan and I live here in the be beautiful Pacific Northwest. I live just north of Seattle uh, with my husband and our baby who is just over nine months old. We love her very much um, and our dog who may or may not make an appearance during some videos. Uh, she likes to interrupt me. She's very nice um, and very large. Her name is Winter. And uh, my mom, who just moved in this summer and is our full-time grandma nanny. And uh, so my husband and I can work from home and it's wonderful. Um, I come from the East Coast. That's where I grew up and moved out to Seattle because if you've ever spent a summer here, it's beautiful and then very rainy. But I love that and you don't have to shovel the rain. It does actually snow here now. Not super often, but it does. Um, but this kind of uh, temperate climate does mean that I can wear knitwear all year round. Um, I don't usually have to put on the super, super heavy stuff, but uh, that's nice. It's a nice thing. So um, what am I wearing? Let's start with that. This is the first episode, so you'll get to see my knit wardrobe probably over the next um, few months. But this is my very favorite t-shirt at the moment. This is the Tolsta Tee. I'm going to stand up, I think, so you guys can see. Uh, this is the Tolsta Tee by Rebecca Clow, who is the Crayabea on Instagram and YouTube. Um, she did this great thing. So this pattern is just a top down raglan, but she really encouraged her testers to go wild with customization. And so there were all these fun customizations included in the pattern release, which is just amazing, totally above and beyond. Um, and so this is a modification very similar to the one that Coco Knits, who's Kelly, Kelly Coco Knits on, um, she's on Instagram. And also I just went on Ravelry and looked up the tester patterns because I saw hers and I knew that I wanted to do it. Um, just like that, because it's gorgeous. She made it in white and I saw this yarn from Yarnaceous Fibers and this is called Pre-Night on her um, Bronto DK base and it's amazing. So uh, this is the tee and it is super cute. It's just super basic, but it does have these um, six eyelet repeats here and then just sections of stockinette that are about the same height. Um, the 
cuffs um the edging is just um actually rebecca includes the link to this in her pattern it's like a no roll um stockinette bind off which is actually it's a cool thing i've never done before um and then the bottom is just you know ribbed also so super comfy this is let me look um so i made the size five um, I used all the recommended needles, which I think is a five millimeter. It's got a nice loose gauge. It's super, super comfy. The holes do make it nice for wearing out. Um, and Bronto DK, I believe is like an 8515. Might have some around here. Um, so it does have a little bit of nylon in it and the colorway is just, it's gorgeous. Uh, this is from her gemstone collection, which I don't know if it's still available. At the time that I ordered it, it was on just an open pre-order pre on her website. So, um, but check it out. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of finished objects, which I'm really hoping editor Megan can figure out how to put pictures into my video. We'll see. But I did finish uh, recently three samples. So they're no longer in my possession, but they were really fun knits and I want to talk about them. Um, and they were all for Flock. So we'll talk about Flock at the end because here in Seattle, obviously I went to that this weekend and it was amazing. And I want to gush about it, but I'll get through these things first. So um, the first one I did was the sorrel which is a um, pattern by abby and selene at wool and pine designs um it's super popular there were a bunch of people at flock wearing summer sorrels or spring sorrels um so there's a couple variations of this this was the very first i think iteration and it's um fingering and mohair held together and this was a sample for the la mercery booth so la mercery put on flock we'll talk about this more but um they're here local they're on Bainbr bainbridge island which is not very far um and i am in a knit group with emily curtis who is gently chaotic knits on um youtube and um M. we curtis on instagram she's a pattern designer she works at La Mercery and in our knit group and was talking about needing an extra sample out of their custom colorway they have from La Bien Ami. Um in their Merino twist base, which I think is only at La Mercery. Um, and it is a two ply 75, 25, um, super I think it's a super wash merino um and nylon and it's 465 yards for 100 grams it is a very nice base it was very fun to work with um in their custom colorway was called autumn hydrangea I don't know if it'll just be available on their website or in the shop after I hope it is because it's gorgeous it's this super um soft rosy and a little bit like a terracotta kind of color in there too. Mix. I have some right here. Duh, let me show you. Um, and it is, let's see if it'll zoom in on it. It is so pretty. It's got some blue speckles, some golden speckles in it. It's got a lot of, um, a, it's a, it looks kind of white in this, but it's really like a super soft rose color. Um, and it's gorgeous. It knits up like a dream. So I held that with some, um, three colors of olive, knitting for olive, um, soft silk merino, and also very nice base. So that is a 70% mohair, 30% silk. Um, it's 246 yards per 25 grams, which is super great coverage. It is nice and thin. It does have that beautiful halo. Um, and they picked three colors, so Jess picked three colors to go with it. Um, and I think that they were a dusty rose on the top, I had plum rose in the middle, and forest berry at the bottom. And the way the color, the colorway works, it's just like with those three, it really was this beautiful fade. Um, having three colors instead of four for a sorrel just made my brain have to do a little bit more math to figure out, you know, where to do the separation. I ended up doing the separation for the color um, just before the last repeats for the yoke, because that's their suggestion suggestion. So you don't have a hard color line right at your bust, the middle of your bust, cause it's about a two, two and a half inch color change. Um, 
So that's what I did and it worked out so well. The bulk of the um of the shirt is plum rose, which is a very it's very nice colorway. And then just the bottom, I did about three or four inches before the ribbing, which is three inches, two and a half or three inches. Um all in the plum rose and yeah, super fun. The fade on the sleeves was fun. It looks great. So I did uh hear from Katie, who is also in Pacific Midwest with me. Um, she was volunteering on Saturday and there was an empty bust. And so she put my sweater out. So I did see it live at the show and it was very fun um, being admired by people. Uh, so, and that one, I knit a size four for the sample, which is a 42 inch bust. Um, I used about two and a half skeins of the fingering and somewhere around five-ish of the mohair so um you know about an equal amount and then I used a 3.75 millimeter needle which is the suggested needle for the body 3.25 millimeter for the ribbing um it's all twisted rib it's so pretty um okay so the second one hopefully I'll also put a picture of this one is uh I did a moonset tee um this was my first of both of those patterns so I had the sorrel pattern just hadn't made one yet um I actually bought the yarn which will be coming in a future video uh and I will show you and um the moonset tee was on my list for a while um I know a couple people have made it and really enjoyed it that v-neck construction is so fun um and my first v-neck so um i guess i should give you a little <laughs> knitting history uh so i learned how to knit when i was maybe like 11. um i learned how to crochet first and my mother actually can do both um she's not much for pattern following and so i really i learned how to do stitches i think i made a, a hat and crochet first and like a bunch of scarves through my high school years um, that were very hideous and I'm very sorry to everybody who I, I made wear them in my life but um, I was very proud of them and it was exciting. Uh, I knit and crocheted a little bit through college. Um, not a ton of great product output. I did like some headbands and stuff like that uh, and then shortly after college I started having friends have babies, which is amazing. And so I started making baby blankets and baby blankets was really my first intro to patterns, which is a really light way to dip your toe um, because it's still squares. So like squares and rectangles, um, I, but I learned how to do, you know, intarsia, mosaic knitting and some, some other skills that made it a little more exciting. Um, and I knit various other things until about the pandemic years then uh and I was still using a lot of you know less expensive yarns especially for baby blankets I'm still a believer that especially for my non you know yarn friends giving them a wool baby blanket is a little bit mean <laughs> because uh you have to take care of that in a very particular way um and a lot of parents don't have the headspace or you know the, the capabilities to do that with a little one so I can speak from experience now I would be able to take care of a knit blanket. My husband, on the other hand, would not like that gift at all. So I think it depends on the friend. Um, but I started, I made a couple of crochet sweaters, um, cardigans, both of them, and then decided I was just going to start making garments. I really wish I had started making garments earlier, though my taste has changed a lot. I probably wouldn't be wearing any of those if I had started making earlier anyway. So um, it was a good time in my life. I started investing a little bit more in yarn. I also, I'm a big de-stash lover. I love to give new life to yarn that isn't being used, even though I have all this yarn here. <laughs> uh, but a lot of this is has been acquired from de-stashes um, a lot. So I could just try different yarns, try different things I, um, to like types of yarn I hadn't used before. So that's my knitting history a little bit. So since about 2021, maybe 2020, I started making garments. And so I have now knit a lot of them. Um, I want to have a more sustainable wardrobe. My husband and I are not huge shoppers. We don't like, we wear clothes to death. Um, but adding some knit things in that I'm very excited about, not always wearing t-shirts, which is my go-to. Um, I do work from home 
even if I'm on camera, I'm all internal facing. So, you know, I don't have to get dressed up, but it is nice to um, have these knit things in my wardrobe. Being here in the Pacific Northwest also, it's frequently chilly in the morning, like all year round. Um, and at night and inside of my house, which has a lot of shade, I can wear sweaters like my entire work life, which is very nice too. So I'm b building those up. Uh, the other sample though, the, um, is in the middle talking about was the Moonset Tee by Ozetta. So this is a top down drop shoulder v-neck construction um, tee. She does have a DK version. This is fingering. She has a DK version that's um, like a pullover full sleeves. Um, and I made this for Yarnaceous. So Maggie at Yarnaceous I think she just put a, an Instagram uh, sample call out and uh, it was early, pretty early in the summer, um, maybe like end of, I guess end of spring. And I have a couple of her yarns. I'm on her um, whip bingo, I think is what it's called, Dis uh, Discord, which is a lot of um, people just trying to finish projects. It doesn't matter. It was very, very heavily active in the beginning of the year when everyone was like, oh gosh, you know, you get to the end of the year, you kind of did all your holiday projects and everything else was just sitting. Um, just to encourage people, there were some prizes and things like that. So, and I think it, it's still going on. People are still posting, just not quite as heavily. Um, but I had won some yarn from her. I've seen her post. She has gorgeous colors, obviously this one. Um, and so I said, yes, I would love to do a sample. And I actually did two for her. So the next two, um, this, the Moonset tea and then a shawl I did for her. Um, and they were for her flock booth. And so that was also exciting. I didn't have to ship them back to her. I got to block them here at home and then just drive them to where she was staying. Uh, and it was really nice to meet her um, in person and see her booth and, um, she told me a very nice story that some, I knit fluenced someone, you know, through this object. Uh, he was checking it out at her booth and then on the spot decided to buy that color that I made the moonset tea in and another color. Um, and that's so exciting. I hope that he loves making them because they're super fun. So, um, I did actually go up in needle size for this one. That's not super common for me. I'm a pretty middle of the line knitter. Um, in the last couple of years, I think it's, I've, on occasion I have to go up a needle size I don't often have to go down um and so this one I did go up a needle size it's a little bit like the plumpness and the type of um material in the pictures from Ozetta for the pattern it does look like even though the gauge is pretty um it's a lot of stitches and it's a lot of rows um Hers looks more open than what mine ended up looking, but all the measurements are correct. And I was dead on for gauge. So um, when I went up a needle size, uh, what I did realize is I did a swatch and it was fine, but I did it in the round. And once I started doing the short rows to cast on the back, weirdly enough, because I use a Portuguese knitting shop or knitting pin um, for my purling, it tends to be relatively tight. So I actually just, it was this like the next day I did a swatch the next day I cast on and I had to go up a needle size. So I did most of the back and then I was like, nope, this is itty bitty. Um, so that was a, also a size four, which is a 43 inch bust. I made this using a Yarnaceous Salta Fingering in the colorway Basalt. Salta Fingering is 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon. Um, it's 437 yards per 100 grams. I used a 3.5 needle, again, one size up from the recommended, um, and I used just about two and a half skeins. So this is the 43 inch bust, uh, which is a size four. It's supposed to fit with some drape. I'm not sure what the um, measurements are. It's not my size. I made this because that's Maggie's requested size. Um, and again, I loved it. Um, I heard because the row um, gauge is like, if you have gauge, the row count is quite large. Um, I mean, it's a lot per four inches. It's a bit of a slog. That's what everybody described it to me as it was. But um, once you split first sleeves, which it really... I was, it was my first v-neck. I was very interested in the construction. So, um, I'm sure people, other people, lots of other people have talked about this, but it's pretty simple. Actually, you start 
um, with your back, you do your back panel, which gives you that drop shoulder. It does, you know, your line is right across kind of, I guess it falls like here-ish in the um, end result. And then you cast on separately your neck band and you start knitting that, you pick up and you increase to make your shoulder, um, your front panels. Um, so they're attached to the back and you also then, um, you just sew down the little part at the back that's not, you know, getting picked up with. I thought that would be more complicated than it was. It really wasn't. It was uh, fun. I I sewed down that back pretty early as soon as I attached both, um, just because it was driving me nuts. And then once you join and you join your V-neck, you join in the round shortly after, and then you just knit and stock net. Knitting and stock net can be a slog, but also it's great for Zoom meetings. Uh, I don't have to look at it. It's also really good for like going out and because it's not, I mean, it's a sweater, but it's, it's a t-shirt. It's not a lot. I didn't have the sleeves done for a while. I kind of did those, I think right at the end. Um, and so, you know, it's just a big tube to bring around. Not a lot of yarn, not a lot of space. Um, so very fun to do that. Uh, okay. The last sample, um, was the copper tint shawl and this is by Taylor and knits. It is an asymmetrical shawl using two colors or more, I guess you could, of fingering yarn. Actually, it would be really pretty in more colors. Um, I think most of the the pictures I saw from testers and from her were in two colors. Um, but it is gorgeous. I hope that I'm putting a nice picture up here. Um, it ended up being like even prettier than, I mean, her, her, her pictures in the pattern are pretty, but like this was, um, done, I think the color was copper and natural also in salted fingering. Um, it was so, it was more fun than I thought to work up. Obviously the beginning goes very fast and it is a lot of stitches. <laughs> I can do a lot of stitches in the round for, um, you know, all of the sweaters I make for myself. I'm an extra large, usually is what I've been knitting lately. It's a lot of stitches for a fingering sweater. This was maybe not even that many, and I still felt like <laughs> this is a lot of stitches across the row. I think you also have to think a little bit more because the pattern re um, has only got three stitch types, I think, stitch like patterns in it. It's a sand stitch, um, a uh, garter stitch, and oh, uh, an elongated lace stitch, which was fun. You kind of just do two yarn overs and then drop them. Um, and it's not, that's not that crazy, right? But you do have to think, you know, every pass, I'm like, okay, what part am I on? How many am I doing of this? Um, so just, it's a different kind of exercise. So I just set a goal to do a couple of rows every night to just get through it. And um, I ended up loving the end result. So that's a possible make again. Um, I'm not really a shawl wearer, so it would be for somebody else, but it's it was a really pretty result. Um, okay, and then my last finished object to talk about. Um, so all of those were finished in the in the recent-ish past. Um, some of the other things that I've recently finished, I'll wear, I'll show you. Um, those I don't have on hand, so I just wanted to talk about them also because they were all at Flock, and uh, that was fun, and just this last weekend. So these are, I am part of the farmer's daughter fibers sock squad this year uh it was my husband's birthday gift to me because i really wanted to try out a like a monthly subscription and they have a cool one you it's a lot of encouragement there's a ravelry group to like post your pictures every month that you finish you can get a gift card if you if you get picked um from that month i haven't won any it's still encouraging me to get them done though in time because I'm like, I want to post, I want to post in time. Um, so this is my July sock. I did finish within the timeline, which was not in the month of July, but it was in the first week of August. And so I actually just finished these um, on the 7th um, and I love them. So I got the Lina 52 Weeks of Socks pa uh, pattern book this year as well. Um, also newish to sock making. I wasn't making socks before 2021, 2020. Um, and these are the Dear Bjorn, which is pattern number 52 in the book. Um, they're still on the blockers. It, uh, so let's talk about it. I made the size two. I used 2.25 millimeter needles, which I think is this adjusted 
size. It is my go-to sock needle. So a lot of times if the stitch count sounds correct, I will just make them regardless of what's suggested. Um, this is, I do use magic loop for socks, which we can talk about later. Um, this was um, Pintler sock this month in the color Lupine. So this um, year is all flowers and their pollinators. It might be wildflowers, wildflowers and their pollinators. Um, so I have this beautiful calendar, which maybe I'll bring down for the August colorway, which I will show you in the next episode. Um, and I might already be knitting them by that time, but I will still show it to you. But in the calendar, there is fun pictures of um, the various flowers that things are named after and the pollinator that they chose. Um, so this month was lupine and it's a gorgeous color. Um, let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit, did it? And it is, um, it's got a lot of blues, obviously is, is the main color, but there is this like really vibrant purple that is happening um, throughout. And it just made it really fun. <laughs> like it's not, you know, some of the other colors this year were a lot more going on. Speckles is definitely a thing for the main color ways. Um, but yeah, super fun knit. Now let's talk about these for a second, just because something hilarious happened. Uh, I did make them with the same needle and I made them about one week apart. Um, and they go opposite ways. You can kind of tell um, the spiral is, you know, mirrored. Um, I made them a cast on about a week apart and this sock, you can even tell on the blocker, <laughs> is much, much tighter than this sock. Why? Uh, no one, no one really knows. Let's see, there we go. You can tell just the swirled stitch, you know, I don't know. I was stressed. I'm not really sure. Um, that's why it's important to just check. I mean, I didn't notice until I was already past the heel turn. These are a toe-up sock. Um, too late, you know, it's fine. Uh, they boot, they do both fit on my feet. One, the left sock is tighter, but I'll wear them. I don't really care. These are just for me. Um, it does make me think though, Charlotte, who is also in Pacific Midwest, uh, does, I've never seen somebody do this, but she makes both socks on magic loop separately, not a two at a time. Um, but she makes them so that she doesn't have to remember she does them like in sections. So she doesn't have to remember, you know, various things she changed, you know, weeks or months later. Um, and socks I think are often her travel project. So it's not, you know, she doesn't have to remember, oh, I did a special decrease or I did this many. She just does them um, at the same time. It's very smart. Also would likely not give me this problem. So maybe that's what I'm going to do for the next socks. We'll see. Um, and okay, let's talk about other projects I'm making. So those are all my finished objects for right now. Um, I am going to start with some tests. So I test a lot. I say yes to tests more often than I should. Um, it's really how I started getting more active into, um, I mean, my like first garments, not by test, but then I wanted to try different constructions and I thought it would be a good way to push me a little bit. Um, and also encourage me when I may, I maybe wouldn't have bought the pattern if I didn't feel confident in some of the, you know, skills listed in the pattern. But tests are so great because you've got a whole community of people making the same thing, running into the same issues. Um, not great if the pattern needs a lot of work and you're not confident in those things. Um, that really happened to me before, but things I've heard definitely, uh, that makes it a little less great. Um, but, you know, I, I've done sideways construction sweaters. I just jumped in. My first brioche project was a brioche sweater. So, you know, just crazy things, um, to try new things. And it's one of the reasons I love knitting. So, uh, the first test I'm going to talk about is called the Bog Seat and it is by Molly at White Owl Crochet Co. And she, I've tested for her a couple of things, a sweater last year and a hat. And I love her patterns. Um, she does a lot of fun things and then some timeless pieces. This one definitely falls into the timeless 
category. It is gorgeous. Um, so this is a sweater. Um, it is a top down circular, circular yoke sweater. It is, um, a DK weight. So I think she probably has both in the pattern, but, um, her sample was done with fingering and mohair and it was this, you'll, it's online. Um, maybe I'll post a picture up here. Who knows? We'll see how good I am at that. Um, but I definitely will link it, um, with the hashtag. Cause you can already see, she's got a couple of her teaser pictures out for the pattern and she did it in this very pretty brown and black which was with black mohair and it was like so moody and it was like just the vibe I wanted middle of the summer and I was like nope throw me into fall so this is how far I am um I have already completed all of oh also this is very fun this construction not German short rows for neck shaping she decided with Japanese short rows was my first time doing that not as scary as I thought definitely I thought reading through it I was like this is lunacy this isn't gonna do anything it was actually really cool um we can talk about those some other time too so uh I have completed <clears throat> one sleeve and I just picked up the stitches for the other sleeve last night something I like to do also with socks if I finish one thing I will pick up right away so I get it done um partly because I have a lot of freedom with this. I did sign up to test the full size, so I'm not going to do a cropped version. Um, I'm not really a cropped wearer. Um, not really even for my size. It's just not something I tend to wear, even though I wear a lot of leggings. I, I'm not a, it's not what I'm doing right now in my life. So I, um, did sign up for the full size. I, I think I'm fine on yarn. I am using stash yarn for this, but I, am not like circular fits I feel like I really need both of the sleeves to accurately um estimate exactly what I'm going to be done for the body when do I want it done when is it going to sit the way that I want so I'm doing sleeves midway through I mean I have a good amount of the body done um I don't know that's like six inches maybe okay so this yarn let's talk about it um it is is it going to pick it up? It is so pretty. I love it. Um, it is not what you would expect. So, um, I ended up using, uh, some yarn I was gifted. So I was gifted this, I think just on Instagram from somebody who had posted it and they just didn't want it in their house, which I get that. <laughs> uh, but it's something I had never used before and it was kind of odd amounts. So I have six balls of this, which is Knit Picks, uh, Capretta Superwash. It is a, let's see, I put all the things down here. It's an 80, 10, 10. So it's 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. It's very soft for, I mean, that makes a very soft base. It is, you know, mis machine dyed. It's it's just a nitpicks yarn. It's not super expensive. Comes in 50 gram balls um, that are 230 yards. So it's a good, you know, 460 for 100 fingering weight. Um, and then I'm using, my first time using, uh, Drops Kid Silk, which from what I've seen and doing some yarn research as we all do, um, is one of the most like affordable mohair options that are, you know, just, you know, not hand dyed, not hand dyed mohair. Um, I did just do the soft silk or soft mohair, soft silk mohair from Knitting for Olive also, which was lovely to work with. And I very much liked it. This is not very different. It's maybe a little tiny bit less soft. It has, it's, I mean, the halo looks pretty similar. The silk band is similar. This one is 75% um, mohair, 25% silk. So the content is great. Um, it's 230 yards for 25 grams. These are only cost like five-ish bucks. I think that's true. Um, drops is not hard or is, is not easy to get in the United States. So also talking about fun yarns you can buy. Um, you can find it online from various shippers, um, that have like an American presence. 
but are your ship from Europe. Um, some of them have, I guess, warehouses here, but it's not really common. You don't find this often. So I went and I did like a drops haul earlier this summer. Um, there were some things I wanted to make, uh, Rebecca Clow at the Crayabea often uses drops or other like affordable European, you know, mass dyed kind of things, um, that we don't have here. And so I just wanted to try a couple. Um, I think some of them were also like the testers had used drops. A couple of them had used like drops, uh, mohair and also, um, maybe they're like cotton merino, which I have right here. So I got a couple of colors, a couple of things just to try them out. Um, and I got a few colors of the mohair. And so this was, um, a little bit planned. I didn't, hadn't gotten in the test yet, test knit yet, but I wanted to do the black. And if I hadn't gotten in, I would have just put it on my list of things to make. So, um, I just make them faster when I'm in the test knit. <laughs> which, duh. Um, so again, I have six balls of this. So I'm, I know it is enough. Um, I haven't even broken into like, even with the sleeves five or six. So I'll, I will be very much fine. Um, but it's not quite enough for a lot of fingering weight in a sweaters in my size. When you're just using fingering weight, that gauge is much smaller. You know, I would maybe be able to make like a three quarter length t-shirt or something. Probably not even that. Um, again, Molly's patterns are just, they're well written. I haven't had any issues with it so far. The sample or the rest of the test knitters have been putting out some really great color combinations and yarns that they're using. I think one person has done. This is due early September. Um, I think the the end of the first week. I am making a size five, which is an extra large. It is 48 and a quarter inches finished. I think that this one is like small ease, like zero to three inches or something like that. Um, I'm typically a 47 inch bust. I think that's what I measure at usually. Um, and I'm using five millimeter needles, which is a suggested size. Um, I ended up actually just ripping out a sleeve that I had done, re-knitting it because this is, I was using small circulars and it just got tight in my row gauge which I could have just added more rows, but it felt also a little bit snugger than I wanted it to be. Um, and the pattern suggestions fit me. I don't have little arms, so I like to make sure that I'm not like squishing them at the top. Um, and so I just actually, I ripped the whole thing out and I re-knit it with a 5.5 on Magic Loop. And the, I tried it on last night. Um, the finished sleeve is, perfect and I love it. Um, it has a nice wide band um, like it's sort of bracelet length but it has a nice wide ribbed band so it like it fits real snug around my um, wrist and I love it. Okay so the next. This is another test knit. Um, I have four test knits going right now. Two of them are cast on so we'll talk about the rest too. Um, so this is Allie's Sweater Light by Sarah Opie who is S Knits on Instagram. Um, this is due September 1st. This was a pretty tight timeline. Um, I'm not complaining. I will get it done in time, but for a fingering weight sweater, I think it was only like six weeks, which as an XL is a tight timeline. I have a lot of stitches. I mean, uh, uh, when I break for sleeves, I'll have more than 500 stitches on my needles. Um, it's gonna fit great. It's beautiful. Um, but that's a tight timeline. So, you know, usually I do pay attention to that. This one, I had the, the DK weight version of Ally sweater on my list for a while. Um, not that I can't just afford to buy the pattern, but like, I love to test. I like to be a part of the design experience. I like to be kind of like just doing a make along altogether, right? I love that. Um, feeding off of each other's color choices and things like that. Also just the encouragement to get it done. So I will get it done on time. I have, I'm at a good place. I've got um, this one. I am kind of regulating myself a little bit more on what I have to get done, um, especially until I split for sleeves. And then um, this will become like my also my desk project for knitting. So um, if you know that Allie's Light has the sort of diamonds um, color work on it, and it is very fun. Uh, I love it. Okay, 
we're restarting because we have plumbers at our house and the dog was not happy about it. Um, okay. So let me go back to this was talking about the alley light, Allie's sweater light. So I, I love, love it. It's so pretty. Um, also we'll check this out. Um, I don't, I haven't done the DK, so I'm sure it's written the same way, but like reading this for the first time in the pattern, I was a little intimidated by the German short rows. I feel pretty comfortable with German short rows, but doing color work inside of them, I was like, whoa, what's going to happen? Um, this, and it's gorgeous. How fun is that? So obviously you need to add a little bit of something. You don't necessarily, your diamonds would be off center or, you know, they wouldn't slope the same way. You wouldn't really be able to just start half a diamond um, or it'd be a lot of German short rows. And this is a pretty good amount. I mean, I like a little, I this sits kind of high on your neck. I like a lower neck too. So, you know, I'd be in for that, but um, it does, it's so fun. <gasps> there it goes. Oh, I love it. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the yarn. Again, with my buying some drops yarns, I bought this. Um, I didn't have a plan for it. So this is Fable, which is um, a fingering weight yarn and it is 50 grams. It's got 224 yards per 50 grams and it is 75% wool, 25% polyamide or nylon. Um, it is a little bit toothier. You know, it's very, it's still very soft, um, but definitely working with it in the color work with a hundred percent superwash merino, which is the other yarn that I have. Um, it feels a little bit different. Um, and it does feel a little bit, it's a little bit thinner than my color work color, but that's okay. Um, this is the color work color and it is just the best purples and blues. And ugh, I'm, I'm obsessed. It's so good. So this is Montana crochet, um, in, their sock color sock base which is just uh, you know i think that's all it's called sock um in the color larkspur which is also so this is 100 percent super rush merino 438 yards for 100 grams it is so nice i mean like the surprise of you get that enough blue that all of my diamonds have a slightly different coloring Ugh. I love it. Um, so I have quite a bit more color work to do. I mean, it, it really right now is only falling about here. Um, before getting, and I think I'm going to be like 10 whole inches before I split for the, maybe even more than that, before I split for sleeves. Um, I haven't gotten to this part of the pattern, but I do really appreciate she's written so that for the color work too, um, so that the sleeves don't have that weird like bulgy thing. Um, she's got increases before you cast on, I don't know, it just, it's very smart the way that she's written this pattern. So I'm hoping the fit is fantastic. It seems like it's going to be. Um, I can talk about that more next week because I'm hoping to be done the color work split for sleeves and maybe a little bit into a sleeve before next week. Um, I'm making the size five, which again is probably the XL. It might just be listed as size five, um, it, which is a 52 inch bust. This one does recommend something like six to eight inches of positive ease. Um, I'm making on four millimeter needle needles, which I think is the suggested size, um, and three millimeter needles for the ribbing. Um, it is a folded collar, which is done. It's, it's nice. It's going to be like the perfect transition to fall. Again, this has to be done September 1st. <laughs> It's, it's August 10th. I'll be fine. Um, it'll be the thing I wear. Like I'm probably gonna wear a ton in like September and October when the evenings get a little bit cooler. Um, the last test I have to talk about. Okay. So I did say I have four. So I have the book seat. I have the Allie's sweater light. I have this next one, which is called the Skyline Pullover by Tori Yu, who is Tori Knits NYC on Instagram. And I have the Staple Tea. I'm not going to talk a lot about the Staple Tea right now because we have been going for several, several weeks already. And Jeanette, who is New Wave Knitting, I think is her Instagram handle, um, 
has done, this is a very cool kind of put your gauge in, put your measurements, spits you out a raglan pattern. So it's supposed to be, you know, a great fit for you, regardless of the yarn you're using or your size. Um, the concept is amazing. The, the pattern itself has been going through a couple of iterations. The math is hard to do something like that. Um, she's also improving it by like suggestions that the knitter, that, you know, all the test knitters are bringing up. And she has asked a couple of us if we feel like we can still hit a deadline, um, if we can wait to cast on until final, not final iterations, but like the things she wanted to update are updated. I think we're almost there. So I'll probably cast on this weekend. Um, I was going to do a fingering weight version because I'd love another fingering t-shirt. At this point, we haven't moved the test deadline back and it's still like end of September and like I've got other things to do. So I will likely make this in DK. Also, because I was looking at my yarn behind me. Um, and I have a couple, they, there just wasn't anything calling to me for this in fingering weight. I don't really want to do this in stripes again, because the concept is it's a staple tee. It's something you'll wear a lot. Um, I wanted to do something that was like maybe a little bit variegated or, you know, tonal, and so I was looking through my yarn and I've probably decided, we'll see, <laughs> on making with this uh, Silky Merino from Malabrigo. I have an odd amount of this yarn also from a D-Stash, which when I first started buying from D-Stashes, I wasn't using my math brain all the time. And also, I mean, I can make a lot of things. I like to make hats. I like to make scarves. I like to make all the things. Um but I have like just under a t-shirt weight of quantity of this. So, um, and this is 51% silk, 49% merino. It is a single ply. It does have like kind of a halo. Um, it is this nice like wine color. Um, the colorway is called Kumparista. I don't know if I'll end up using this, but I'm going to swatch it and see what I think. And I think I want to do some, you know, a gauge very similar to this. Um, this is a slightly lighter DK. So it's 150 yards per 50 grams, which gives you like just under a sport weight. Um, I think because of the single ply, it does like plump up a little bit. It will definitely like bloom, um, when washed. So I think the open gauge would be really nice. Um, and then I have to think about it too hard. And I just have this kind of, this is a nice color on me, wine color thing, probably more perfect for fall layering. So we'll see if that's what I end up doing. Um, and so let me talk about my last test, which I cast on yesterday. Um, I'm going to show you, even though it's a little bit hilarious. So I um, saw, yes, two days ago that Tori still needed mid-size, larger size um, test knitters. I have just finished, not that long ago, um, a Brooklyn Raglan light for her, a test knit for her. I love that sweater. I also think she writes really smart patterns. Um, and that was a, the fingering weight version of her Brooklyn Raglan, which has been out for like maybe a year or two. Um, I influenced one of my Pacific Knit West friends into casting her first Brooklyn Raglan on because I will also be making the DK version. That's how much I loved it. I love it in a variegated. I will show you all the things about it later. Um, but so she posted she still needed some of the larger sizes for testing. The timeline is great. It's not until the middle end of October, I think. Um, but it's a shadow. Shadow. It's a saddle shoulder construction, which I haven't done before. And so again, I love to try new things when I test. Um, it's, you've got that security blanket. Tori's tests don't usually come with an Instagram group. I've got a lot of test opinions. We'll talk about those some other day. Um, but she doesn't have an Instagram group. So it is a little bit more doing it yourself. Or if you follow many of the Instagram, uh, Instagram knitters, um, I'll see that people are testing it, you know, just because they post stories or whatever. And I might like talk to a couple of people. Anyway, um, this is top down saddle shoulder construction. It has a ribbing detail that goes all the way down the saddle shoulder, down the, the sleeve. Very cute. So it's called the Skyline Pullover. Um, I swatched yesterday and I decided to go down a needle size. 
swatched again with that needle size um because I'm using something that is an it's an interesting yarn so we'll talk about that this is how far I am you guys are you so excited uh I am because at least it's on my needles once I, I actually stopped because we were going out to dinner and I was like let me just do this really quick and then decide what I want to do I think I'm actually going to because you knit this two of your your panels first and then you pick up and do your back and then at some point you do your front. I'm not really sure. I didn't read through all the way. Um, well, I read, I skimmed through the whole way. So I know how it's generally put together, but, um, because they're just two separate panels, I think I'm going to do this sort of like a two at a time sock. I'm going to just knit on the other and then knit them at the same time so that I don't really have to think about or make one and then make the other of the same thing. Um, again, I use a Portuguese pin to purl. And so these are knit and purl. It's a rib. It's a, a three by one rib. Um, so I don't want to have to just pull that out forever. It's easier for me to just like wear it and, and do this a couple of nights um, and then be done with it. So the yarn that I'm using, so this is a discontinued yarn. Should I be using that for a test? I mean, there's a lot of other similar yarns, so I think I can kind of just put a note like that in Ravelry. This is called um, Zephira by Hobby. Um, I've bought a bunch of hobby yarns over the years. Again, really great for like lots of colors for acrylic yarns, cotton yarns, um, and affordable, maybe not as lush wool yarns. So this one is 55% cotton, 27% wool, and 18% acrylic blown tube construction, which just means, um, I think it's just like a cotton tube even closer. Do, do, do. There we go. Um, you can see it's kind of like a white cotton tube and then has blown merino in it. So it's like green merino instead of a white tube, which gives it sort of this fun, um, it's called dark pine as the colorway, but it gives it a really light light green. I think the overall effect will be relatively green. Um, uh, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it is listed. I think it used to be listed on the hobby website as a worsted weight yarn, but, um, it is, um, oh, I don't have, oh, here, I have a little sleeve for it. It has, 50 grams in a ball and 164 yards, which is 300 and, you know, 28 or whatever, for, which I would put it as almost a sport weight. But that blown tube, I think it's a little bit deceptive. It is very light yarn. And I've, I've experienced this with other blown tube yarns. Um, they might look like they have the yardage of sport, but they are plump. That blown tube with the, the merino in them, they're a little inconsistent. They're a little bit plump. Um, so when I did my swatch yesterday, I started with a suggested size of four millimeters and I just went down a quarter uh, millimeter. So it's one US size down. Um, so I'm going to do it on a 3.75. With that, I got perfect gauge. Um, it is going to be a decently plump sweater, I think, but I'm okay with that because the cotton is super breathable. Um, and it's still going to feel really light. Uh, the pattern is written, you know, any DK weight yarn. I think that Tori did her first sample, um, of the pattern in fingering plus merino or pl plus mohair, fingering plus mohair. Um, and it's gorgeous. Uh, she did in this really beautiful tan color. If I can, I'll put a picture up here too, because obviously this doesn't look like anything for you guys to know what I'm talking about, but you can also visit her Instagram for that. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I'm very excited. Um, those will be coming. We'll always be talking about things I want to cast on, or I will be soon because that's my life. But um, I typically have somewhere around two to five projects that I'm actively working on. Um, I try not to have too many languishing whips, though I do have three or four right now that I really have to decide if I'm going to frog or continue. Um, they've been sitting for a long time. Everything else is, even if it sits for a couple of weeks, it's not really sitting for longer than that. So this one um, is something that I cast on just for myself. It is not a test. And 
it's been in my queue for a long time. It's been like, oh, I love it. I'm so excited. So this is the Wild Ivy by Wool and Pine Designs. Um, I love them. <laughs> I did a couple tests for them also in like December, January of this year. Um, so I was gifted a couple of extra patterns and these were on my short list. This was the first one I think I asked for, you know, after doing a test. I have been lusting over this pattern for many a month, um, you know, a couple years probably. Um, it is a T. I think it's really like a three quarter. I think the sleeves go all the way to the elbow. Um, obviously your choice. You can shorten all of those things. You can make it a sweater. Um, it is a top down scoop neck tee. Um, I suppose it's a raglan. The construction is not like a typical raglan because that scoop neck is, is very, um, far down, but you do have the increases that'll sit on the shoulders. Um, and I'm going to pick up the neckline. That's what I'm going to do this weekend because, uh, it's got this beautiful lace panel in the front. Um, I'm, in, I'm so, it's so pretty. And the lace is fun and the repeat is really long. It's like 30 rows or something, but uh, it goes pretty quickly. Um, but what I'm at right now is there's some waist shaping in this because this is supposed to be a pretty fitted, I think it's like negative two to, to four inches. I mean, obviously you can always make this whatever size you want, but um, this is like at about a zero for my current size. And I have a more narrow waist than I do in my bust. So I do want the waist shaping to fit me pretty well. Um, and then it flares out. They do incorporate some like so hip shaping. So like back, you go in, you go out. Um, as much as you want though, there really isn't a recommendation. It is. It does tell you the recommended number of rows between um, your decreases, but it just says until you hit your natural waist. That's hard to tell when there's a whole lot of open neck going on. So I tried it on and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do the neckline. So I'm picking up the neckline this weekend. I'm going to do the recommended number of stitches um, because I like the scoop that they have. They have so nice in their pattern, actually what it looks like in several different necklines. And I kind of wonder if they just, it's the same color sweater, if they just ripped it out and did it a couple of times, which is crazy. But what you, what you need to do to show, so you can bring this all the way up. You can keep it extra wide depending on your preference. Um, I like the pattern as it's written, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then I might pick up sleeves and also add a little bit of length to both sleeves to really tell how it's gonna sit for the waist shaping. Um, so we'll see. But this is um, knit with Back Loop Yarn Co. Um, in her cashmere DK base, which is an 801010 also. Um, it is a 231 yards per 100 grams in the colorway Evergreen. And I knew I wanted it in green. That's what the sample was made in. As other people have made it in green and it's so pretty. Um, I really love, I will talk more about Erin as a dyer in the near future, but she's one of the dyers I think doesn't get quite enough love, both just like on the interwebs and you know, um, I just, I love, I love the color. It's like the perfect green. Um, it's a little bit more of like a yellow green than a blue green. I don't know if that really makes sense, but it's, it's definitely like, oh, it's so nice. Um, it's got a lot of variegation in it though. It is a, you know, it's a tonal. It's, it's, so, it's so pretty. Um, I know the cashmere picks up the color a little bit differently. I have this also in a, um, this colorway in one basic DK and the color is, I think a little bit stronger on that, but that I know tends to happen with some of the cashmere bases cause it also has that bloom in it. So we'll, we'll see the progress on that. I'll put progress markers. It's not something I really do, but I want to do for this kind of experience. I will put progress markers on all of my knits, um, tonight. That is the dog. Sorry. Um, I will put progress keepers, keepers on all of these so we can look at progress uh, and what I did. And I don't always knit, you know, just down. So, you know, I'll add sleeves. I'll do other things. Um, it'll be fine. Okay. You guys, I just stopped for lunch <laughs> and the dog was grumbling in here. So I took her for a walk. We're just restarting for the acquisition part. Um, 
Okay, I got some really fun things. So Flock, for those of you who don't know, um, is a fiber festival. It was the first year ever of Flock uh, happening here in Seattle. And this was put on by the Shop La Mercerie team. Again, um, that's a yarn store that's in Bainbridge, local here to Seattle. And we hadn't had a fiber festival, you know, in the city. I think there's like a little bit of sheep and fiber that happens at a couple of the state fairs in Washington, but um, not like a hand dyed yarn experience like there are other places. And Jess at Shop La Mercery saw the whole. She did an amazing job putting the show on. Um, Emily, who is in Pacific Knit West, uh, our little knit group, she works at La Mercery and she was one of the key people putting it on. So Emily and Jess, amazing job. Um, it was super fun um, <laughs> and total chaos. And like in the best way, I think Friday surprised everybody, but, um, so it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of last weekend. Uh, you had to buy tickets. There were lots of people who came in from out of town. We had both local dyers and from wherever. I think mo more of the dyers were kind of like Western US based though. I mean, that was easier for people to drive and things, but we did have some big ones. Um, like Sorella was there and, um, EKF, which they're Denver, so that's that's Western US, but uh and Woolberry. I think those are Sorella and Woolberry, I think are both on the East Coast, but um tons of variety. Super fun. So Friday night was a uh, masked only shopping and was only open for two hours. Um I think a lot of people anticipated this to be like not as big of the night, but all the yarn crazies were there. <laughs> so it was insane. I was only intending to go on Friday night. Um, I do have a little baby. We like to be pretty protected. Um, I feel more comfortable masked in big public settings. We haven't really done a lot of big public things yet. Um, since we brought her home from the hospital, she, uh, we adopted in December and she is also, she was a preemie. So she went and, um, she was in the NICU for quite a while and they just like give you, you know, be smart. For your kid um she is like covid vaccinated now and she is growing like a weed so like we're not concerned there's no health concerns for her uh i was just trying to be cautious and at the time that i bought tickets i didn't know how i was going to feel about it after i bought tickets i met the pacific knit west group so i've only really been knitting with them for two and a half or three months it feels like a long time you guys are the best uh it's been everything um but i had a little snafu <laughs> on Friday. Um, and my wallet went missing after the first booth, which was relatively tragic, but also you can turn your credit cards off, whatever. Um, it went missing in the EKF booth, which was a madhouse. Um, I did look, I looked for it there. I told them they were looking for it. I didn't go back at the very end of the night. We were really exhausted. I mean, even two hours, two hours of shopping was overwhelming. Um, I found it on Saturday. I had already ordered all of my credit cards again, you know, all of the things. Uh, so Chris is not averted, but I got my wallet back and I really love that wallet. So <laughs> it's fine. Um, it did curtail my shopping just a little bit because I was attached to a friend to purchase. Uh, luckily, Sylvan and Katie were both super generous and were like, just buy whatever you want. You know, we'll figure it out later and and, and Venmo or whatever. Um, and so we did that. And so I still bought much yarn. But, um, and also Friday night was just overwhelming. There were a lot of people, every booth, because it was such a condensed timeline, every booth was crowded. There wasn't a single place that didn't have lots of people. Um, and I really wanted to go and squish yarns that I hadn't bought before. I really wanted to experience, you know, and talk to the dyers for some of the non-super wash bases, talk through some of the patterns I want to make and just, you know, see if they'd be a good fit. Um, since I don't have a lot of that in my stash and um, it's nice to squish before you buy. So I decided to go back on Friday or on Saturday mid-afternoon. Um... Katie and Sylvan were volunteering and so they gave me uh the like go ahead at around um 1 30 or 2 the crowd had died down a ton um I stayed from like 2 to almost 5 or 2 2 15 to almost 5 I got a lot of time I went and squished everything um and then I did some of the smaller purchases and 
just kind of like touching, talking, really getting to talk to more of the dyers. That was really fun. So I'm very glad I went back. Um, next year I'll probably volunteer. I'll also probably like have a, all of the day's ticket, you know, it was a great time. Um, and I want a little more of that, like yarn experience of spending all of the time with your knit friends from the internet, which was so fun. Just who we met. Um, Bridget from BZB Knits was in town. Um, and stayed with someone in our knit group. And so I got to meet her for the first time and she's amazing. And she totally, um, spin influenced. <laughs> she, she got, uh, two of the gals in Airy Knits, who also has a podcast, um, and Katie to buy little e-spinners because she was like, I'll just teach you right now. And it's something that they've been wanting to do. It is also the first purchase I'm going to go over because I did buy some too. Um, so I'm hoping to take a, little bit of a spinning class this fall. I, you guys, I have a lot of yarn. I don't think it's going to be something that I fall deep into the hole because I do have so many knits. And I mean, I've, I've only been making garments for so long. There's so many garments I want to make for myself, for family, friends, for the baby, um, my husband, my mom who lives with us now too. I feel like I got to <laughs> throw her on the list more too. Um, so I don't know how much I'm going to get into the spinning, but I would love to make some socks or some shawls out of hand, uh, my, my spinning. So first purchase is, um, a little ball of Targi and I, this is intended for the spinning class that I will theoretically take early fall. Um, so more details to come, but this was suggested by Bridget, um, as like a great beginner cause it's a little stickier, I guess, uh, yarn. So that's number one. Um, I want to talk through some of the little things too. So, um, and I'm going to do it this way so I can load all these yarns into a bag. I will put them back on my shelf also. Um, another thing I'd love to talk about in a near, in near future episode is, uh, how I categorize my stash and, um, how I document it. So we'll talk about that. So they had a indigo dip dyeing station too that you could buy tickets for and you could decide anything you wanted to bring a lot of people did merch t-shirts and these project bags so I got a project bag and it's got the little squiggly sheep on it I'm gonna rinse this again and you know like get unwrinkly um but it's so fun the back is fun it just like it didn't matter how it came out it was more just like for the experience to do it we learned a little bit about indigo dyeing which is pretty cool um and, you know, we got to do this together. So that was super fun. Then I also had on my list, um, I try to buy less single use plastic in my life. That's just a life thing for me. Um, so I didn't want, I actually didn't have any wool wash that was not like, I got, I got a ton of sample packets from somebody a couple years ago and I have been using them. I'm out. Um, my samples actually, uh, it was like the little like Euclid's I had a couple, Soak I had a couple, I mean I had a bunch, I had a lot of them. Um, I used them all up, they are gone. My last two samples for Yarnaceous, I used them on. So I needed wool wash. And so I got three, whoop, three bars from Woolen and & Co. And these are very cute, I'll just pull one up. It's a cute little label, it's a cute little box That's, that can be recycled. Um, and it's just a bar. And so, um, in theory, it's very much the same. You get it a little bit warm, you soap it up like you would, you know, like you lather it up like you would anything else. And then you just let it run under the water a little bit while you're lathering as much bubbles as you want. There's not like a prescribed amount. I mean, also like so cool wash people just pour in, you know, a little bit. Um, and they smell amazing. So I got juicy citrus and white tea and ginger and saffron and honey. I love a light scent. I also like prefer like florally, um, citrusy things less like, but not like lavender. I don't like lavender. Um, and not like sweet, sweet smelling stuff. So th these ones were perfect for what I needed. Um, and then I got some very fun stitch markers. So obviously I had to stop by Hello Lavender. So the way that we <laughs> went shopping on Friday, 
like crazy people, um, we had a strategy. So we knew that the EKF booth, that's Explorer Knits and Fibers booth, would be very busy. Um, we happened to be pretty close to the front of the line. Um, we did show up a little bit early, but just the way the line formed, we were near the front of the line and we pre-assigned roles. So Katie went and bought us merch. Uh, we knew that that was going to be just pretty popular and, um, there wasn't, you know, there's only a couple of people checking people out. So, um, just to get it moving, um, Sylvan went and got uh, the Explorer Knits and Fibers because she is the queen of Explorer Knits and Fibers, which <laughs> it's a good title for her. <laughs> and then I went to Hello Lavender. Um, I feel very happy that I did that right after is when I lost my wallet. Uh, but I did get to check out and, um, Reshma and her husband are, Mike, are super nice. Um, and they were a little overwhelmed right at the beginning because like people ran for that booth. I didn't run. I walked fast. Um, but we knew we wanted the flock stitch markers. So this is what it looks like. Oh my God, the squiggly sheep. It's so cute. Okay. And it came with a couple of like little flowers, little matching flowers. Um, I have three, a red, a pink and a yellow. And those are also so sweet. I mean, like she does all of these with her hands, which is just Let's see if it'll go. Oh, there. It's insane. They're beautiful. Okay. Um, and then the second one, I was just looking around. Um, there were some like limited edition things. I, she has these very cute sweaters. I ended up buying for everybody in the group. So I bought a couple sweaters for the group. Um, there were these very cute little, um, black shapes with like, they had like moons in them and some stars and those were really fun. And like the painting on them is gorgeous. Um, but I saw this book and we'll talk about books very shortly. Um, and I could not, it is so cute. Like what the heck it has these very, um, fun little flowers and that leaf. So sweet. So you'll see these probably as the progress, progress keepers for now near future, um, for all the, all of the knits that we just talked about. And then I bought one more progress keeper because I couldn't not. It was so cute. I didn't actually buy any yarn from Pearls and Postulates, but um, it's such a cool, they like, they donate to STEM organizations for girls. I, I love it. The It's a great, um, she's a great little, um, you know, values for her business. Um, so this one's called R&D, which is part of what my husband does for his job. Um, and it's a little flask and like mini anything. <laughs> I love it. It's so cute. Um, and then I got from, let's see if I can show these. I got mix and match. Like I got to pick my own colors from fiber and flame. I think that's what they're called. Um, I'll put the name up if I can, Whoa. but they're these very adorable little glass blown, um, stitch markers. And I got to just pick the colors. Those are kind of colors I'm loving right now. Some teal, some orange, some pink. Um, and I just got a few of them. I have a lot of I mean, I feel like you can never have too many stitch markers. Like right now I have a lot of projects and, uh, one I'm about to cast on needs like 30 plain stitch markers. I probably won't use any of those, but like, that's crazy. Um, so yarn. Okay. I'm going to load it. Oh, one more thing before I go to yarn is this, <laughs> this yarn chicken mug. This is by Jam PDX, which I think it's like two gals, um, someone and Megan, and I think she spells it the same way as me. Um, they're like all hand thrown pottery and in Portland, um, yarn chicken. I mean, come on, that's so cute. Uh, so I've been having coffee out of that in the mornings and it makes me so happy. <laughs> I love it. Um, I didn't show you cause there is still a little coffee in there, but it's like, it's like that same color blue on the inside it's a great size coffee mug. Oh, I love it. Okay. Um, let's talk through some yarns. So this is, um, Silly Goose yarns, which let's see if it'll, her logo is so stinking cute. Um, and it's black. <laughs> it's called Goth Babe. It is her soft fingering base, which is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards. Um, for 100 grams and then I also picked up from her at the same time um these I feel like this is not a great way to see this but this um very fun jewel minis 
um, on her plump fingering, which is a 7525. Um, and it's a little, the yardage is 92 yards per 20 grams. So I have five of those. Um, this is actually one of the only things I really don't have any plan for. I sort of impulse bought them. I spent a little bit of time talking to Courtney who runs a Silly Goose Yarns um, and at her booth was I think Emily and Amanda and um, I met the knit group Pacific Knit West through Courtney's D-Stash Discord. Also, I bought much yarn through her D-Stash Discord. It's helped with a lot of this behind me. Um, and it's such a great community. And she also just made a community discord. That's maybe something I'll talk about like next episode or, or soon. Um, just like having the difference of discord versus Instagram, um, and the world and, and yarn in both of those. Um, but she was so sweet. And so we chatted a little bit and not like I had to buy from her from that, but I did come back at the end of the day and I hadn't gotten any minis. There were some amazing minis out there. I don't gravitate so much to like, there's a lot of Barbie pink, which I mean, valid also so fun. Um, but you know, this was like the one that called to me at the end of the day. And I think I'll probably find some sort of fun shawl pattern, or maybe I'll just do some really nice stripy socks. What we can, we don't know yet. We'll find out. Um, stay tuned. Uh, I, saw some of these online. So Porter Woolco had, this is Porter Woolco, Woolco. They had, um, a really fun flock, special flock colorway. It's not really a colorway. It's like a light, it was like a lightish purple with some orangey flecks and very fun, super summery. Just not something I probably like where I'm trying to be a little conscious of my color palette, what things look best on me and vibrant tones tend to, I think I'm a deep winter. Um, Vibrant tones tend to look a little bit better on me. So, um, and Nay Knits, uh, she also has a YouTube podcast, also is a deep winter. And she just made something in this, like this blue that really influenced me <laughs> to look for something that was pretty close to this blue. So it's, it's picking up pretty good on the camera. I mean, it is that bright in person and it is gorgeous. Um, I got three skeins of this and this is called also the name. It's called Dabba Dee Dabba Die D-Y-E. I love like a punny lyric, lyrics based name. Um, so this is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards for hundred grams. It's just their Merino nylon is, is called the, um, is what it's called. And this is a four ply. Oh, I didn't say that for Silly Goose. Both of the two that I have are two ply. Um, I like both. I knit a lot with both four and two ply. I don't have a preference yet in my life. Um, so I got these four ply. So fun. Um, I also picked this up on Saturday, um, with my non superwash looking, touching, feeling all of the things. Um, one of the projects that I have in mind, oh, I, speaking of that, the blue, I don't have a project in mind. I know that's enough to get me a finger weight t-shirt of various types. And so I might save that for like a early spring knit next year when I'm like feeling the urge for more t-shirts. I'm, there's a lot of really great ones out there that came out this year and there probably will be some more fun releases. Honestly, it might be a Tulsa fingering because I love the Tulsta pattern. Um, but this is Diamond Lane, which this one is called Sprinkles. It is an Elmer Tweed and it is fingering weight, 70% Merino, 30% cashmere, 400 yards for hundred grams. And it is so, it's so soft. <laughs> I love it. It is Look at those sprinkles. How fun. I really debated. They had a really dark like charcoal color with the same color sprinkles or this light. I think I will wear this a lot in this lighter color. I do have very dark hair and sometimes I don't gravitate, gravitate towards as much black just because I, it makes me look like a, a, a mass. <laughs> but um, this is going to be a birch pullover by Andrea Mowry. And I have not yet made any Andrea, Andrea Mowry patterns. But 
with her birthday sale, I just bought seven or eight patterns. Um, I had a bunch that I have tagged. I have a couple that I have yarn for now. Um, I just pick up so many tests that things get pushed out and I'm trying to be a little bit better about making sure I cast on like the wild Ivy, something for myself of, I mean, these are all for me mostly, but something that I really want to make that I've been eyeing and then test also. Um, so this will become a birch pullover. I knew I wanted a non super wash for it. That's what she knit her pattern in. The stiff, the stitch definition is amazing. Um, with the non super wash because it's a half fisherman's rib or something. And that eats up a ton of yarn also is a kind of a denser, you know, so almost like a brioche, um, fabric. And so it gets heavy. I mean, I am making an XL and I needed six full skeins. And I think the pattern even calls for like 614 grams, which will be very close. And honestly, like a half inch less is not going to make me very upset. Um, and it is, I just don't want it to pull. I want it to keep its shape. And so this, even really soft non-super washes tend to have a little bit more bite um over time they don't stretch as much and so that is what I was looking for so purchased um let's do the other non-super wash I so I do have all the skeins I got all six at, at flock um I knew sea change fibers was where I wanted to stop too so she does I think only non-super wash bases um of varying types which they're really interesting mixes and like I hadn't touched any of them before so I squished all the yarns. I will likely buy some more from her online over the year um, because if I find patterns, I feel like it would be a better fit. Her colors are great. Her bases are amazing. Um, and she's got like, I think like year round in stock things too, which is nice. So this is Sea Change Fiber. She's out of Santa Cruz, California. And this one is called, the yarn is called Deep Ravine Heathered Fingering. It is 85% British Cormo and 15% silk, um, 435 yards for hundred grams. And this one's called, her name is Rio. It is, um, let's see if it'll pick up. It is a really nice color. It says heathered. And I mean, I get that a little bit, just like probably the silk content, but like live, it really looks like a, such a beautiful tonal, deeply dyed. Like it's, it's really nice, um, very consistent looking, and it is like a lovely medium saturation, I would call this, like um, berry color. So I have three skeins of this, also intended for a tea. I likely will do something that has like a little bit, like where I want the stitch definition to really pop, that's what I'll pick. So I don't have a plan for that one either. You guys, I don't have a plan for a lot of these. I tried to go in with the plan, it was beauty, yarn, overwhelm. It was so, so many things that were the best. <laughs> I wanted to buy all of them. Obviously, I could not. Um, partly because I have a lot of yarn. Partly because this was my first in-person fiber festival. And I wanted to make some smart decisions. So the only single skeins I got was the Silly Goose. And then these next ones I'm going to show you, which I actually have an intention for. Um... I know myself and I um, definitely have enough. Like you can't even see all of them up here, but this whole long thing here is all fingering, not all singles. There's definitely sweater quantities in there, but uh, like all variegated. So I really love a variegated hand dyed color, but I have a lot. So I have a lot to mix with. Um, so it's like a little bit more tonal based for some of my purchases and at least just buying sweater or t-shirt quantities so I can just use them later. Um, so, but the next one I bought singles. I think I'm going to make a mohair edition Oslo hat or something like it. It will probably be a hat. Um, and this is from Lamb Good. Oh, find the yarn, find the, okay. And oh, their label's so cute. Okay, so she teased this colorway along with like a peachy color and a pink. The, the pink was like a Barbie colorway. The other peachy is also a flock colorway. So this was like flock exclusive, but also just like for flock. I think she's gonna, I think she has them up on her website now. Um, So Lamb Good Fibers is the her yarn company but she runs 
a fiber store and I don't remember what it's called. Um, maybe I'll put it down below. But so she has like many other yarns that I think she like has in her store, right? But she has her own colorways and she dyes them and that's very fun. Um, I had it with her and she was very nice. Um, this one is called, I'm going to need a flock of this. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay. So, uh, you can see, oh, look at that. It's, oh, it's so pretty. I love it. Like this teal, oh, it's gorgeous. It's just got everything going on. And the mohair, so I got this one, sorry, is her classic sock, classic fingering, which is four ply, 463 yards, 400 grams, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the accompaniment, the fuzz, is mohair. I don't have a problem with using both mohair and surrey. I have lots of both of them. Um, and so I got the mohair. She does not carry Surrey or didn't have it at the show. Uh, this is also, I'm going to need a flock of this. Um, it's lace weight, 459 yards for 50 grams, 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. Um, like also look at the colors whoop, in there. The yellows, how they kind of go in this and like, it's like very orange. Oh man. I'm really excited. They're going to look amazing held together. Um, Sylvan also got the same. Maybe we'll make buddy hats. Maybe I'll just let her make hers and then decide if I want, want to make the same one after. That's more my speed, but um, we'll see. So, okay. I have um, one more t-shirt quantity. Um, well, I have two more t-shirt quantities, but this one was just the only that I got from a dyer. So this is... Junie and Sai. Oh, we talked to her. She's so lovely. Um, and this, okay, I'll, sh I'll show this color again. So I don't know where she's based out of, but this colorway is called Learning to Fly. It is a fingering weight, 462 yards for 100 grams, 75% wool, 25% nylon. It is super wash and it's a three ply. I love a three ply fingering. There's like something about it. It's not quite as plump as four plies. I mean, like, obviously this is 462 yards. So, you know, it's a light to -er fingering, but, um, I don't know. I just like them. They're nice. The twist is nice. So this color though, let's look at, let's look at two of them together. Um, it is, oh, it's so nice. I did a little bit of, you know, scouting through her various skeins. I got three of these so that they're pretty well matching. Um, like on the back side of this one, there's a little bit more of the pink. There's more pink on the bottom here too. Um, so this has like pink, um, like a marigold kind of yellowy orange color. There's like some bright yellow in here too, that beautiful teal. And then the, the darker pink is like almost a wine color. Um, and there's definitely brown in here too. So like, there's like this, this like dark patch here looks pretty brown in person. Um, it's lovely. I cannot make, wait to make something with this. This will definitely be some sort of t-shirt, maybe something a little bit more basic with like a little raglan detail or whatever, but, um, I'm gonna wear it all the time. I, I'm obsessed. Okay. EKF is next. Okay. That's where I got. Oh, okay. Um, the largest part of my yarn haul came from there. Um, Pacific Knit West is big. We're big fans of EKF over in the group. Um, so two, three of the, the knit group members went to summer market. So I already have, which we can maybe talk about soon. Cause I'm not always going to have a yarn haul. I don't think I might, who knows? Um, but some of these came from the summer market. And so like we have plans for those. Um, but this next color, spoiler, is Pike Place. So I'm thinking, stay zoomed, stay focused. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. Okay, this color, let's talk about it. Um, Allie, who runs Explore Knits and Fibers, dyed up, I think there's six or seven, um, exclusive. 
uh, you know, Seattle, she dyed a collection for Shop La Mercerie in, I think it was February, um, and did a pop-up there. It, it broke the, <laughs> it broke, uh, Bainbridge for a little bit. No, it was like very popular. It, there were a lot of people that went early to the pop-up on, it was like one day, I think. Um, not all of the yarn was gone during the pop-up, but a lot of it and only a little bit made it into the shop, uh, which Shop La Mercerie does just carry EKF, which is, I don't think there's like tons of shops that do that. Um, but these were all, so she did tonals for Seattle. It's a Seattle collection, um, named after various places, the Puget Sound, Snoqualmie, Squim, um, super fun. And the colors are so good. Uh, I probably should have bought a couple more of the tonals. We're really hoping, we were talking about this uh, this past week at Knit Night, that I'm hoping that they come back again for another La Mercerie pop-up. They were really popular. They were really popular at the event too. A lot of them were gone. Um, she did bring to Flock other colorways and she put them all on her Instagram. They were like, it's kind of like the favorites plus Seattle. Um, and since a lot of people hadn't gotten Seattle because they couldn't, you know, they weren't local and didn't come out just for the pop-up a lot of you know local folks got it but um I did not go to the pop-up so the rest of Pacific Midwest got Pike Place and made teas and tanks and were wearing them at Flock and got a very cute picture together and I bought mine there also, so we can match later in life and, you know, a matching moment is fun with your knit friends. And it's a fun color. Not necessarily, like, of all the colors I would have picked for a tea or tank for myself, but it's, like, very vibrant. I don't know. If I think I'm going to love it. Um, it. So, I'm, the color is really based, I think, off of the Pike Place sign, which is, says public market over Pike Place, um, which, if you don't know, is, like, the longest can continuously running outdoor market or something in America, um, which is crazy because Seattle's not a very old city. Um, but I think a lot of other ones have moved place and this has just been here for, for a long time. You can buy all kinds of things there, but people think of it as like the, the place that fish is thrown. <laughs> they do throw fish there. Um, they do it every day. Uh, and you can catch fish. Uh, I've never done that and I'm not really interested, but it's a very fun color. So I have an idea in mind for this. I'm between two patterns right now. Oh no, this one. I know what I'm going to make. This I'm going to make the ballerina wrap top by Alexi Tavel, who is two of ones on Instagram and, and all the places. I, I love a lot of her patterns. I've only made a couple of things, but that wrap top, I'm going to do a little bit longer sleeves than she has. The customizations I think will be easy for it and a slightly, this is Rocky's DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino, 274 yards for 100 grams. So it's a slightly lighter DK than like what you'll find with a lot of them are 230 something, 245. Um, enough so that the recommended yarn from Alexi is a Lion brand yarn because that's her partner for pretty much everything. Um, and that yarn Lion Brand does whatever they want, right? <laughs> because they can. So I think it was listed as like a DK. It's a little closer to a sport weight. Um, but I think it's a floofier yarn also that she used. So anyway, this will be perfect for that. And that's what I'm making. Now, um, the last two. So this was a little bit of an impulse buy because I just love the color. Someone it, it recently influenced me to buy this. It influenced me. Um... And I don't actually remember who it was, but I was, I saw like a couple of Instagram posts of somebody making something in this colorway, which is called Barrel Aged Sour. It is, I got it on Cashmere Caverns, sock base, which is 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. Are you guys seeing a trend here? I apparently really love this base. Uh, this is 435 yards for hundred grams. It is a fingering weight. Um, the color. Okay. Ellie is a genius. Her and her whole team. I mean, let's not discount like Darren and team too. Um, they all really held down a super crazy booth at Flock and they make the most gorgeous colorways. So, you know, and they, these two skeins look relatively similar. Focusing. Ugh. It's just got these 
those pops look a little bit brighter than they do in person in the camera, but they, it's got these like little orange pops, but it's, I mean, it's like a deep plum color with some blush rose in there and some orange and some grays or like, like a gray, gray purple. Um, it's pretty. And, you know, actually I don't, I don't think I've ever knit anything with EKF yarn yet. That may or may not be true. I think that's true. I now have some. I have a little bit in my stash that I got like for socks and like single skeins, which maybe were intended for socks, but who knows what I'll do with them. Um, and I'm really excited to make a sweater because I've just seen amazing, amazing sweaters with her variegated um, are really like more watercolory. They don't necessarily pull the same way. I'm a big helical knitter, so I don't really care about that. Um, but it's so fun. I'm so excited. This is going to be, it's just like so fall. I think I'm really in a fall mood, even though I'm wearing this very bright green thing. And, um, I can't wait. I've been wanting to just like itch and cast on. I mean, you just saw I have sweaters on my needles. I'm ready for fall knits. I'm ready for fall colors. That green, I'm, I've been knitting all the green things, which is like a fall. Deep greens are a fall to me. Um, okay. And then I got the flock colorway also from Explore Knits and Fibers. This is on the Denali sock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards for 100 grams. So sorry, four barrel aged sour. I got four skeins, which will get me a sweater. Um, I can get for an extra large, I can get a sweater out of four skeins, most patterns that are not heavily cabled or like brioche or fisherman's rib, right? Those eat yarn different story. So I got four skins of both this flock and barrel H sour to make something in the future. Um, this, I don't know what I'll do, but I love it. Okay. So she, what she did was she layered all of the six, I think Seattle tonals. Again, don't quote me on that. I have, I didn't do my research for that. I didn't write notes on that part, but, um, she layered all of the tonals. So you'll see a little bit of that pipe place color in here. That is the brightest, I think of the Seattle tonals. Um, there's like the squim is like this, the, the darker gray lavender color in here. I think Puget Sound is this blue up here. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's just, it's great. Um, and one of my knit friends is already, is it gonna do, do, nope. Don't find the yarn back there. Find this. Okay. One of my knit friends is already cast on her project in flock and it, knits up beautifully. She, she's doing something in DK and Rocky's DK, but phew, I'm excited. It's going to be amazing. Um, that's all of my purchases. That was kind of long. That was a lot. So we'll see how long this video might be like really long and I'm sorry, but also it was an intro to me. It's my first time. I'm just trying to feel it out. Um, there's a lot to talk about for the finished objects too. And also <laughs> I always have a lot of projects going on. So, um, that was flock. Oh guys, I put it all in my big flock bag. You can hold a ton in this. This was an amazing, amazing, amazing thing that Jess picked out or whoever on her team picked out. It's got a zipper, which you gotta love here in Seattle. It rains. Um, it does have a nice deep inside pocket for your scissors and notions and what have you. And I think I fit like all of my skeins, which was many, um, end up being in here. But I just put everything I showed you in here and like, there's room to spare, you know, it's pretty good. Um, it's gorgeous. So, uh, that was my flock purchase. Um, last couple of things to talk about. Um, I told you my overall impressions of flock. I loved it. It was great. I cannot wait for next year. I loved the community meeting the dyers that I like, you know, just love all of the things they put out. Um, I was like a little bit, I feel like a fangirl <laughs> for Hello Lavender and EKF. And like, you know, some of the people that you just see posts and you love their aesthetic and, you know, we see people's faces, like a lot of it, their brand is themselves, right? So they're online, they're doing lives, you know, you join them, you're just a person on the screen, but like there are people that you feel like you're like, Oh, <laughs> I know you, but not really. Um, 
So I felt a little fangirly for a couple of the dyers. I mean, like meeting Ashley from Sorella, she was super sweet. Um, they had a real tough, I'm sure most of you guys saw this, like in their stories, uh, a lot of their stuff arrived broken, which is so sad. It was their first, they shipped really far, first of all, and it was their first time doing like a booth. And I don't think there was anything they really could have done differently in anticipating that, but like you, just heartbroken for them because a bunch of stuff came broken. And it seems like whoever shipped for them didn't care very much and did not do a great job of protecting their things. And that's really unfortunate. Um, I wish them like all the best for any next one they do. And I hope they do a lot more because her, you never would have known. On Friday, I like went into their booth for a second. It was really, really crowded also. Um, but it was so her aesthetic and so cute. Like just walking around like she had put cushy floors down, like the whole thing. It just screamed Sorella and I loved it. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, so I can't wait for flock again. And I really, I think I did okay at my first yarn festival. I did not go crazy buying things. I did buy some things I don't have projects for, but I know I'll use them. Um, and I, bought at like not a lot of singles which I feel very proud of myself for and I did just impulse buy a ton of other things so um you know a couple stitch markers one mug which the mug I don't need I have a lot of mugs but like yarn chicken can we it's the cutest thing so uh I read a lot so let's just like spend five minutes talking about books real quick um I read a lot of what my husband likes to call <laughs> garbage books, which is true. I mean, they're a little bit trashy romance, some paranormal romance. I love a romance story. Um, I was describing this to another gown the knitting group the other day. The, the thing I love is like, I am here for character development and like the build, the anticipation of, of a romance. Um, I like a steamy scene. I read all the smutty books. I mean, I love a steamy scene, but also like, it's really the anticipation. That's what, if it's done well, that's like really what I'm going to recommend to other people. And, um, and I like all kinds of, I mean, I would probably mostly read mo romance. I read some, you know, things that would just be classified as fantasy. Um, I've dabbled in the sci-fi, but that's not generally the genre I'm listening to or reading. Um, and I audiobook a lot. So while I'm knitting, most nights you'll find me audiobook and knitting after baby goes to bed. Um, my husband really likes is thinks that he's now going to be a golfer. So he's got golf YouTube up all the time, learning golf things, watching people golf. Um, I listen to books <laughs> while that's happening. Sometimes I watch those too. They're entertaining to a degree. Um, okay. So I'm also always reading more than one thing, pretty much always. Uh, I have something usually on my Kindle and that's what I go to sleep you know, read a couple pages before I go to sleep. Those are usually like a little bit of the longer thing that I don't, they make me sleepy. So I go to bed, you know, fall asleep while I'm reading. But, um, I, when I'm audiobooking, I, I listen kind of fast. And so I get through books really quickly. So in my audiobook world right now, I'm listening to Awakened by the Vampire Prince, um, by Charlene Hartnity. And it's the third or fourth book fourth book gosh I don't know I'll put it down below in the series um and these are like purely trashy romance with a paranormal bent so um vampire prince as in the title um fey princess fall in love a lot of like it, she's built a world that's um where vampires, fae, and shifters, like wolves and bear shifters, all just like coexist with humans, kind of, sort of. They mostly kind of ignore humans. I think that's sort of mostly what it's been written, how it's been written. But um, the other two, I think it was just two before. Oh, no, there are three. So this is the fourth one. So the other three were uh, vampire, human, shifter human shifter vampire uh vampire and shifter plus human so very fun little combinations anyway 
it's fun. Um, there's a lot of like alpha-ness going on. I'm enjoying it. Uh, definitely an easy listen while I'm doing color work, which I feel like I, I like count in my head as I'm going, um, you know, and just I do a lot of checkbacks. I don't have to concentrate very hard on what's happening in these books, but I'm enjoying them. Um, a spicy level, I'd give these like a, like a, like let's give them a four pepper because there are a lot of menage in the books. There's like two of the main couples in the previous books were two, two guys and a gal. Um, so, okay. So what I'm reading, I am in the middle of the rogue crown, which is the five crowns of Okrath book three by AK Mulford. I've taken a break. I'm like, this is on, it's not because I don't like it. It's just on the shelf. I was reading it at bedtime and like kept only reading like one or two pages. Cause I was like really tired for a period of time. So I feel like I need to this weekend, just pull it out and read plus knit, like actually just read on my Kindle and flip pages and knit and, um, get a little bit further and get back into it. But those are really fun. Also Fae and witches and humans in the world. Um, but it's mostly about the Fae who control like all the power. There are like all the Kings and Queens of all the areas partnerships with witches or using witches to their use magic against each other um a little more fantasy than romance I think romance is definitely a big part of it but um there's a lot of politicking happening um vying for thrones etc I love them I think they've been they, they've been very entertaining um this one is just a little bit slower too which is fine um I'm not like complaining. I just need to get back into it. So, um, and I really like the main character for this one. Um, I love what, so these just follow in the same universe, like a different crown, um, of the five crowns. That's, uh, hence the, the series title, but, um, a different like crown. So it's like East, West, North, South, and High Mountain. Um, and so, all the characters in this one I've you know most of them I've seen in the other books and I'm I'm invested I, I want to know what's going to go on um and so we'll get back into that this weekend and then I um on my Kindle Unlimited which is also where I'm often reading um I picked up Out on a Limb which Rebecca Rebecca Clow also <laughs> on her Instagram. Um, she posts books that she finishes as well. And like, you know, sometimes just a little bit about them. And this one, she said it was so good. And so she might have even talked about it in her podcast recently. Um, but it's by H Hannah Bonham Young. And it is so good so far. Uh, there is an accidental pregnancy. I mean, this is like in the very beginning of the book, so I'm, I'm not really spoiling anything. Also, it's like inside of the foreword. Um, just so people know, cause that's not for everybody. Um, but also it's like not disability focused, but it's about like two characters that have, um, one has a prosthetic leg and one has a, like, I don't know what do you call it? Malformed hand, like a smaller than average hand. Um, and that, you know, life challenges, how you cope, how you find love when you are not, um, you know, a typical, typical for, for like in your body composition. Um, and I think that's so interesting. I love to read books where the main characters have something a little bit interesting going on. Um, most of us are not quote unquote normal. So it's nice to, you know, see a love story where people, you know, overcome things that, that can just make them really self-conscious or just make it harder, um, to find a partner. So that's what I'm reading. Um, I'll probably talk about a couple of my favorite series as I go through like the newest books coming out as well. Uh, but if you want to tell me below, what are you reading? What are you knitting? Uh, you know, and all of those good things. Um, any questions about flock or any of the yarns I purchased, any of the patterns I'm making, throw them below. I will. This is my first video again, as you know. So I'm going to try to be really good about like answering, responding, etc. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at a underscore naughty underscore mess. Um, and I'm on Ravelry as a dash naughty dash mess. And I'll post those bo both below. 
you can always check out my projects. I'm not the best at putting notes in there. When I do tests, I try to put a little bit more. Um, and it's something that I've realized I do like to go back and see what needles did I use if I want to remake something. So I'm trying to do that a little bit more as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me in my very first podcast. I'm sorry it's so long. I will probably edit it down a little bit, but I hope you had fun. I had fun. This was a great time. I will do another one. Even if only my knit group watches it, it's for me. So, uh, and you, me and you. Um, but yeah, let me know if you like the format. If you like, um, want to learn anything more about the yarns behind me, point them out. I will tell you, uh, and I will talk to you all next week. Thank you. Bye.